So hey, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some ways that we can use the new point cloud tools that came around with the subscription advantage pack for Civil 3D 2010 and then were enhanced with some surface creation tools for Civil 3D 2011. So let's say, let's forget about the whole laser scanning point cloud idea and think about those really large ASCII files of points that you get. So sometimes you're not exactly sure which areas matter or what you might want to build a surface from, or maybe you need some big context of elevation range or something along those lines, and then an actual terrain model for a smaller piece. So why not import those big point files as point clouds and then use it to help you figure out where you'd want to build a surface. So when I go to create a point cloud, I get a lot of options here. You know, XYZ, so a lot of those big LiDAR type data sets or big DEM type files that you might get from publicly available information or some kind of a, a data store, you can actually use those to build this point cloud and I'll show you what I you know, want to be able to do with it. Also notice I get Esri ASC and a couple other Esri formats, PTS, PTX, ENZ, almost anything you can think of here and um, you, know, you can make your own formats as well. So I already have a point cloud built in my drawing here. I'm just going to switch it from that no, a no show style to something we can see here. And one of the challenges with these really large format files is there's so many points and we need to figure out how much actually matters. So when I select the point cloud, I get the context sensitive panel where I can crank down the visible point density so that I can refresh a little bit better or you know crank it up when I want to zoom in on an area. Now when I use the build uh, from surface tools, it's going to build based on what's visible. So if I do uh, make a change to the point density or maybe make a style that only selectively shows me certain points in my cloud, that's what we'll, it will use to build a surface. So that's pretty handy, a lot easier than the blind way of you know, referencing that um, point file to build the surface or even worse, bringing them all in as Kogo points. So I can get a feel for my point cloud. Then I can use an elevation range style. So very much like a surface elevation range style. I can uh, build a style that's going to show me elevation ranges. So I can get a feel for what's happening across my entire data set and maybe make some exhibits this way instead of feeling like I have to make a tin, do a surface analysis and go from there. So let's say this particular area was what was most important to me. And of course you can flip this in 3D and look at it and do everything that you want to do. Um, but I just want to build a surface from you know, the stuff in this area. So if I pick my point cloud and right click, I can get add points to surface, build a new surface, you know, existing ground from point cloud, just so, so I know what I'm doing. And I'll pick a, you know, contour style, use a window, grab it from the drawing, say, I want to build tin from this particular area here. Now remember it's going to use whatever's visible so that uh, density setting that I set I can crank it up higher when I'm ready to build the surface. If I want a little bit more of the data to come through and now I have a surface from just what matters to me. Not sure what kind of profile view style I have in this drawing. So let's just uh, make a quick profile just so that we can see that the surface was built, but forgive me if it's ugly. Thank you, Panorama, that was very helpful. So here we go. So I have this tin surface from my point cloud and now I can get rid of the point cloud, turn it off, detach it, and I have just the area that's important and I was able to weed it in some more intelligent ways. So hopefully this gives you some ideas of how you might be able to use the tools. Talk to you soon.